Mailbag Monday, Mailbag Monday, Mailbag Monday. Yay. So, I got a bunch of stuff here as usual. And I've got a beer here as usual. This time it is from Alberta's Boyne Man Brewing. We have Trip Hammer Robust Porter. Some cool engineering drawings of some uh, some trip hammers, which were in uh, basically an early version of a uh, power hammer. Very cool. IBU 25. Okay. Uh, dee, 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 alcohol six and a half. Woohoo! This is gonna be a good one. Whoa! Hmm. Okay, this is gonna take a little bit of time for that to settle down. I'm gonna pour it off camera and I'll uh, get ready to do the rest of this stuff here. Well, that was a bit of an ordeal to get that poured without it ending up on the floor, but I managed to persevere. It's it's not bad. It's not as uh, heavy as a, as I would normally like a stout to be, but it's uh, it's a lot fizzier, clearly. Um, and, don't mind a good head once in a while, but that was a little extreme. Anyway, enough about the beer. Let's get into our first mailbag item. This is a party light ball. That sounds like fun. Hmm. LED small magic ball. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, that looks cool. And it's got a USB on the go adaptomatic thing with it. So you can plug it into your phone. But I think I will. Oh my god, yeah. I'll just plug it into a USB power bank. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, check that out. Wow. Color changing. So what have we got? We got four LEDs in there. Whoa, dazzling. Um, all blinking kind of. Let me just shut up for a second. Hello, one, two. Oh, oh, it's sound reactive. Well, that's pretty cool. Annoying. Can I get into it without destroying it? Or destroying my fingers, for that matter. Ah, uh, that seems to be glued shut. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, there we go. And if I just... Ah! Ah, yeah! Okay, so we've got four of those... Those, those two-watt LEDs or four-watt LEDs, something like that. Um, let's get in a little closer here. And we have a microphone there. We have some random schmoo. Those aren't soldered in there very nice and straight, are they? So there's four of those LEDs. And they come down to... Oh, wow. There's a surprising amount of stuff going on down here. Most importantly, what is the chip? Hmm. Generic, unnamed, unlabeled chip. Yeah, no idea. Okay. So in the absence of any information, it's probably a microprocessor, microcontroller, or I suppose it could be some special specific thing designed just for this purpose. So what it'll be doing will be reading an analog voltage off in the microphone, which is probably amplified by well, there's three transistors, are these where's the microphone? Microphone is there. You know those oh there's four transistors and there's four LEDs. Okay that makes sense. One, two, three, four. Oh no, there's five transistors. Okay. So maybe one of those transistors is acting as an amplifier for Mr. Microphone. That would make a certain amount of sense. 
And then this, the rest of it is driving the LEDs. Where does that LED come up through? Through there probably. Hmm. Okay, that's kind of neat. I wonder what it looks like without the refractor. About what you'd expect. Hey, make some noise. Hello. Ba ba. Wee. Noise, 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 noise. Okay, so there's a blue one and a red one and a couple of green ones. Is that what you're seeing? Something like that. <laughs> Fun toy nonetheless. Wonder how much that thing cost. Okay, 4 watt mini disco stage light, party light, DJ, KTV, magic lamp ball for phone E. Um, I could not find the original listing. I bought it from this guy, Yafi Top, who, as you can see, is a noted seller of quality electronics. So, I'm going to link to the search that brings up a whole bunch of these things uh, when I link to it. There's not much to say. It's 4 watts, which means those are 4 1 watt LEDs in there. Um, and yeah, they all seem to come with a USB on the go adapter of some sort or other. That's kind of neat. Is it going to be too distracting if I just leave that thing running over there? Oh, we'll try it anyway. Next thing in is development board module. Yeah, that's what it looks like. A couple of oh, they have antennas. What are you, you, you? Okay, so we got a little SMA antenna that cranks onto there. These both look like the same thing, so I'll just uh, leave that. And on this end, we have we have a zoom, so you can actually see what's going on here. V plus ground. CSNCE, which is probably chip enable, Mosi, Miso, IRQ, and MS. Oh, Mosi, Clock, Miso. Okay, so. Got serial data going in there. What's on this side? Aha! An NRF24 L01 chip. Which means that's exactly what this module is called, an NRF, um, yeah, NRF L01. So basically this is a, um, a little data radio that you plug into the Mozzie Miso of your Arduino. And the other one goes to another Arduino some distance away. Um, and with the, and this other chip in here combined with the antenna leads me to believe that this is the high powered version which can get quite some distance based on some of the tests I've seen online um, but it can still communicate with the normal version which hang on uh... yeah here's the standard version that's super cheap all over eBay and everywhere else and that is can you see the same chip on there, but it doesn't have the amplifier chip. It's got an, an antenna just etched on the board. There's the crystal for the reference there. This one, there's the crystal reference there. The pinouts presumably are the same because it's the same signals and everything else. Okay. I'll have to get to playing with those things one time. Those are good for remote data sending, um, remote controlling. They're very low latency compared to using, say, uh, an ESP32 with uh, with Wi-Fi or something like that, or an ESP8266 with its Wi-Fi, or really any kind of Wi-Fi, just because Wi-Fi has a lot more latency than this basic little serial protocol does. SMA antenna NRF L01 plus PA plus LNA wireless transceiver communication module 2.4 gigahertz one oh 1100 meters 1.1 kilometers from ah my old friend DIY box 
And free shipping and $3.25 each. I bought two of them. An easy and suitable module if you want to set up your wireless communication. It has a good balance between performance and cost. Yeah. Um, less than three fifty each. That's not too bad. So they say... Okay, so 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. So that's in unlicensed free band. That's uh, at the edge of Wi-Fi. Uh, oh, it's a 3.5 volt device. Okay, I'll have to keep that in mind. Um, can't power it straight off the same power as an Arduino. And because it's pulling a lot of current for the amplifier, you're not going to want to take it out of the 3.5 volt or 3.3 volt on output on an Arduino because that's just going to swamp it. Um, it's pulling 150 milliamps. Which, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot, but the Arduino is not intended to be a current source. Uh, it's got 125 different channels within that band. And, oh, it'll support up to six channels of data reception. So if you've got it set as a receiver, it'll uh, look at six different channels at once. That's kind of cool. Next in, we have computer accessories, it says. Suitably vague. Oh, look at them heat sinks. Wow. What's going on in here? Oh, look at that uh, flux left all over the board. Whoa, look at that toroid. A big honking automotive type, mini automotive type fuse. It's a 15 amp fuse. Wow. So what do we have here? We have in, we have out, we have a pot labeled CV. Hmm. Oh, and there's a header that's not populated here marked fan. Wow, okay. So what's on there? We got a chip on the back and a board. UC3843A. I don't know you. What are you? 78L09. Okay. We have a uh, 1 ohm resistor. 10 ohm. 010. Really low impedance resistor, anyway. Um, and a couple capacitors on the at the input and a couple at the output. That big toroid and a couple of some kind of transistor or something like that there hmm that's uh, screams power supply doesn't it again this has been so long that i can't find the original listing that i bought it from but this is the same guy i bought it from uh bt factory i bought it at auction as well he's got another one for auction right this minute although by the time you see this it'll be expired um i paid 525 which is exactly what this one starting bid is and it is 150 watt 8 volt 38 to 32 volt input to 9 to 46 volt dc to dc boost converter 150 watts it claims input current it, it can draw 16 amps at max um, if you enhance the heat sinking um, it can output up to 8 amps at the higher voltage. Um, it says it can do up to 60 volts out. That's pretty cool. Okay, now I got my little bench power supply set to 10 volts, which is the minimum that it suggests. And this thing was cranked very high. Um, let's just see what happens. Ooh, 55 volts. That's slick. Let's see how much further up it'll go. 56. Oh, it's going into current limiting over here. So I'm going to crank that up some. It's drawing 1.6 amps right now. With no current load at all. It's just burning all that in here. And its output is 59 volts. Oh, there, I've hit the limit. 
59.8. So that's 60 volts. That's bang on for what they said in the listing. That's cool. And it's going into current limiting again. I think I'm going to turn this back down to a more reasonable voltage. Why are you not going down? There. Hmm, it looks like it got into some kind of a weird oscillation. It was just stuck up there drawing huge amounts of current. Because now, when it's generating only 30 volts, it's drawing 35 milliamps. Let's bring this up to 48 volts. Okay, so it's drawing 40 milliamps over here and putting out 48 volts from a 10 volt input. And those are getting noticeably warm. Wow. Even over there away from where the device is. Yikes, I can see. Oh, well, maybe that was from when it was drawing stupid amounts of current. Hmm, okay, note to self, don't max it out. What's next in the Disco Light Edition of Mailbag Monday? It says it is plastic sheet. Oh wow, that's teeny tiny. I'm gonna have to magnify that to find out what's in it, I think. Okay, so on the back it's got this here logo, RCWL0530. And on the front, we have volts in, serial clock, serial data, INT, IRD, RD, and ground. Ah, and we have a number, max 30100. Hmm. Max 30100, heart rate oximeter, pulse sensor, pulse sensor, module new from go in electronic another old favorite that i bought from a whole bunch this was four dollars and 56 cents and according to my notes i got this thing took three months to get here from china yeah almost exactly three months wow so what do i need to make this thing work uh, again, it's a 3.3 volt device, so I'm going to have to put uh, uh, level shifters in there, probably. It combines two LEDs and a photo detector, optimized optics, and low noise analog signal processing to detect pulse, oximetry, and heart rate signals. So I'm going to be guessing that I'll have to find some kind of an Arduino library to dick with this thing development board module quantity one I already know they're lying because it looks like there's more than one in there there is in fact four of them and what are them hmm oh, adapter module oh Oh, oh, oh. Huh. Imagine that. Remember I was mentioning earlier that I delayed playing with the NRF24s because their connector is not breadboard friendly. Now this is the adapter. Um, so there's the, you plug in the NRF24 L01 and it's eight pins and then they show up. That's not any more breadboard friendly at all. If those came out the bottom, that would actually be breadboard friendly, but it's not. Anyway, uh, so what's that on there? Oh, AMS 1117 3.3. That is a 3.3 volt linear regulator, which is upside down. And it looks like, oh, it's got a DC and ground in here. And a whack capacitors to uh, stabilize the power going to this thing because 
one thing, anytime you're, you're reading about these NRF modules, you'll see everybody suggests to put a capacitor across the power supply as close to the module as you can to smooth out the power because it's got some a very spiky current usage curve. It's not just steady state. It goes from drawing low current when it's receiving to relatively high current very quickly. And a lot of power supplies, especially when they're a distance away, don't respond fast enough to that current demand. So if you put a capacitor across the power leads here, that acts just as a uh, little battery essentially to uh, give this guy a little shot of current when it needs it before the power supply gets around to catching up. So I'm guessing that's what this little 3.3 volt also that means I don't have to come up with my own power supply because this is that power supply. I just got to throw five volts at it and it will do the capacitating and everything. That's cool. And I got four of those. That means I can actually get to playing with these. Yet another tinkering with video coming up at some point in the future. Two pieces socket adapter plate board for 8 pin on our NRF 24L01 plus wireless transceiver module from Module Fans. Another one that I've ordered from frequently. Seems to be most of everybody that I've got today has uh, been somebody that I order from frequently. Uh, anyway, I bought two of these. They cost buck thirty for the pair, so I about paid two sixty for four of them. Yep, that's it. All right, there's uh, today's mailbag items, five of them. Um, got this power supply here. Not too bad a thing, I think. This little blood oxygen meter, that's going to be interesting to play with once I find an Arduino library for it. The NRF modules that I was just talking about and their little thingy here. There's voltages there, voltages there, that just plugs onto there. So those can work together. So there's a... There's a few, few. Oh, right. And, uh, and our disco pal over here. I just got so used to it sitting there. I didn't even notice it anymore. And the USB on the go. Now, I don't think I'm going to be using it with that. I don't think I want to turn my phone into a disco light show. Although well, that could be neat too. Should order a whole bunch of those. <laughs> For the most ridiculously minimalist disco light show ever. Anyway, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you have any comments or questions or complaints or suggestions, leave them all down in the comments down below. And uh, if you have an extra buck you want to contribute to the beer fund, hit me up on Patreon. There's a link down in the bottom too. As always, there'll be links to all these things. Thanks again for watching. I will talk to you later.